So the Trail 125 is, uh, for most of you don't know, is a reboot of a bike that Honda made way back in, let's say way back, but back in the 70s, I think. Uh, they had the Trail 90, or the CT90, and then uh, I think they bumped up to a 110 at some point. And, uh, yeah, we're doing 50 miles an hour, not bad. Uh, and then it went away for a while. Uh, and then Conda, of course, for most of people who probably know, has been uh, rebooting old bikes like the Monkey and the, uh, oh, crap, what's that thing? The Cub, Super Cub, has come back. Um, and they finally brought back the Trail 125, or the CT 125, which was a good idea because this is the most useful of all those bikes. This is the most versatile. It's got the bigger wheels. It's got, uh, uh, you know, on-off-road tires, mostly road, but on-off-road tires. It's got better suspension and more ground clearance. It's got the big rack in the back. It's, uh, crazy easy to ride, no clutch. Very, uh, very practical little bike here. It's a four-speed automatic, uh, four up, uh, and uh, I'm doing 50 miles an hour right now, and uh, just cruising just fine. I could probably wick it up a little higher, actually. Cruising down US-1. Took me a minute when I first got in this to remember the ins and outs of uh, automatic. Because if no one's ever, if you've never ridden one, you know when you, uh, you wouldn't know that when you pressed on the shifter, you're essentially also engaging a clutch, or disengaging a clutch. So it it's like pulling in the clutch, and then when you let off the shifter, it's like dumping the clutch. So you gotta, you can't just smash the shifter down when you're slowing down. You need to do it as you're slowing down. You can't do all your gears at once. Oh. So it's comfortable. It's much taller, actually, than I would have, uh, than I imagined it being. It's probably be nice for most people, but I'm, you know, I'm five five, so it is a tall bike for being a small, but for being a little 125 trail, uh, putz around bike. It gets up to speed pretty good. I mean, I'm keeping up with traffic. Let's see, speed limit's 55. Let's see if I can hit 55 and hold it. Oh yeah, no problem about a third third to half throttle right there just cruising 55 down the highway it's got a single person seat little baby thing yeah it rides pretty good not bad that horn's in a funky spot though keep hitting the horn I'm trying to hit the blinker it's a massive horn button this tiny little blinker button. All right. All right. Let's cancel that. It's got the same 125 cc engine that comes in the Monkey and then the Super Cub. Good solid little motor, four speed. I think the new, the new Grom. It's also in the Grom. I think the new Grom is supposed to be five speed, though. So this would be this would do really well with five speed. Uh, four speed works though. I mean, like you saw, I did 55. You really don't need to cruise much higher than that. I think my dad said he had it up to 62 topped out, which is uh, not too shabby. Not too, uh, it's got a nice, comfortable riding position. Not bad. The seat feels a little small, and I'm not a big person, so I can only imagine what the seat would feel like for a big guy. It feels feels like it's just enough for me. Um, it's also a little wider and thicker in the middle than I thought it would be compared to the old CT90. But I think you know that's probably I'm sure that's to cover up all the new emissions and electronics that come on these. Pull half bad for a little, little baby air-cooled 125. 
I mean, it's not fast, but it uh, twists the throttle and it pulls. I'm in third or fourth right now. I'm fourth. Still pulls through the gear. Fuel injection works real well. It's quiet, smooth. Mirrors aren't. Yeah, they're pretty good actually. Not bad. <sighs> I forget exactly how much it retails for. I think it's on the four thousand dollar range. Which, considering what this thing cost new back when they were built them in the in the seventies, is a little. Ridiculous, but considering what things go for today, it's it's about what you'd expect. And uh, oh god, see there's I'm talking about shipped it down too fast. All right, let's do a quick walk around. I have a center stand. Oh, I do have a center stand. Oh. So they did a fantastic job of making this thing look like the original. I mean, that's, that's a good looking bike. Like I said, it's a little bigger, like, uh, like girth, I don't want to say girth here, that sounds stupid. Um, it's just a little, um, thicker, right? I don't know if that's the right word, thicker. You see down in the middle, it's like just a little, this area's just a little wider. But like I said, I assume that's... To house all the extra electronics and the battery and all this stuff, but they still got to show you. They still run the snorkel up the back. The air intake's way up there, which is really cool. So it can do some decent water fording. You know, the tires, like I said, they're they're more street tires, but they're on off road, dirt uh, dirt road worthy, for sure. A lot of metal, nice big metal rack. Love what they did with the exhaust. The exhaust looks cool. I think they did a good job, uh, aesthetic-wise. Um, a really good job. Looks very, very similar to the original. Alright. Yeah, this is a solid engine to put in it. I mean, you always want a little more power, right? Wish I had a little more power, but... It's not bad. I mean, I'm only 150 pounds, so this thing... This thing goes pretty, you know, not horrible for considering what it is. I mean, it's, this is wide open. There's no tack, so I'm kind of just guessing where to shift. It's wide open, and this is me. I'm kind of sitting up. Not trying to be aerodynamic, and I'm pushing a lot more wind going this way. I'm only doing 50, 53. Go into Ridgeway here. You can only expect so much out of a low on 25, though. Let's see if I can't find some dirt to ride around on. As you imagine, something this small, I mean, it it whips around. You could you could do donuts and or you could do U-turns in a in a single lane easily. It uh, oh crap! How do I get around in here? I'm it's so lost in here. Uh, but yeah, so you can. I mean, the tires are super skinny. They're small, so you could. It, it turns on a dime. It can spin around. It's a light. Uh, it's got the nice step through, which is it's it's, um, it's a good step through. It's not a. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out where the hell am I going. See, look, I can whoop, turn it right around. Um, it's still pretty tall in the middle, but it's definitely more of a step through than a regular motorcycle. Um. And, you know, I don't ride stuff like this very often. Maybe that's exactly what a step through should be like. 
Yeah, you know, he whips back and forth. This Sorry, I'm still lost. Uh, this might be, you know, kind of too small for a bigger rider to really enjoy. Um, it's really hard to say. I think it's, it's pretty good for me. But if you were a bigger, say, 6'1", you know, 2, 220, this is might be a little small. Um, for me, it works pretty good, though. So everything's in just about the right spot. So if you can hear, you can almost blip the throttle and downshifts if you do it. Because like, like I said, when you push down on the, on the shifter, it's like you're also pulling in the clutch at the same time. That's how it works in the motor. So you can, as you push down, you can blip it and then let your foot back up. Yeah, hummingbird, this is the where I want to be. So my grandmother lives right here somewhere. Anyway, so you can still kind of blip it, which is which is good for downshifts. Yeah, look at that. See, it works pretty good. Oh, I know where I'm going to go. You know what? I'm going to go this way. Because I'm going to go down the dirt road. Around the park. So I can get a little dirt on it. Make my dad mad because I got dirt on it. So these right here, these are the kind of roads this thing's made for. 45 mile an hour. Cruise around town. You know, run to the store. Run to the grocery store. Run to the hardware store. You throw you know, a little plastic crate on the on the rack on the back or something like that and carry stuff with you. Great pit bike for, for the racetrack. No clutch makes it easy for anyone to ride around. Sips fuel, it's quiet. Thing's got a whopping 98 miles on it. Um, it has been windy as heck here lately. So I'm pushing a hard headwind, so it's it's doing 45 fine, but it I, I can tell it doesn't want to do a ton more. On a normal day, though, it should I feel like it'd be fine. Like we saw, we did 55, no problem, a minute ago. When well, we weren't pushing the wind. Your brakes good. How's the anti lock work? Oh, it's only front anti lock, I bet, because I just locked up the rear tire. Suspension's not, uh, it's not too bad. It's, it's a little springy. I think they could have added a little more rebound in the rear. Because it is a little springy. Um, but it chokes up the bumps pretty well. It just kind of wants to, kinda, it's kind of bouncy. That's all. Alright, I haven't been back here in a while, so I gotta remember where I'm going. Alright, this is this way. Go back to the park here. Mess around on the dirt road. Yeah, it's much better if you blip downshifting, because it's pretty abrupt if you don't. Oh, there's a lot of people, and no one's paying attention. Get off your phone. Did they pave this? Has it been that long since I've been back here? Holy crap, they paved this. It's just be a dirt road. It doesn't look like they've paved it anytime soon. Shoot, how long has it been since I've been back here? Uh, that's too bad. Hoping I get this thing on a little bit of dirt. Yeah, 
yeah, if you let the shifter down a little slowly too, while you're applying throttle, it's a little smoother. Because it gets really abrupt. If you just slam the shifter back and forth. So unfortunately we didn't really get to take it off-road. Couldn't really find any place. I'll take this thing out again to see how it does on, uh, on some off-road area. Um, but obviously you're not going to want to take this thing on like single track. That would be silly. It's not really made for it. I mean you could. I mean go for it. But uh, it's definitely not designed for it, right? It's designed, it seems like it's more designed, take it down a dirt road, dirt path. Could be a bumpy, chunky dirt road for you to live out west or up in the mountainous areas. You know, broody, chunky, rocky dirt roads, like fire roads. Sure, yeah, all day. Uh, single track? I would, uh, I wouldn't, I, you could totally take it on a single track, but just don't expect that much out of it. Right? Because it doesn't have a ton of power. Especially if you're in altitude or... A lot of inclines and stuff, it's, you're going to be pretty limited. But, uh, da, 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 da. but for running around town, dirt roads and fire roads, sure, I'd do it. I say it works. Alright guys, so that's it for this one. Uh, as always, like and subscribe. And I uh, hope uh, you guys got some useful information out of this. And uh, let's see what we can do next time. Later.